that's that about sums up about half of our games right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Also, Aspire, I love how you got one of the m most recent quotes. Do you want to melt a snow dragon? <laughs> you know, it's fine. <laughs> oh. Are you okay? Scream. No. You can do this. Hi, everyone. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit different compared to norm what you normally see. Uh, I think the last time we did this, we were talking about Withra. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Landar edition of it. Welcome to Derp's Talk. <laughs> Tasteless Derp's. Yay! Tasteless Derp's. <laughs> Where's some Derp's and we're going to talk? I don't know what that was. I don't happening. know either. <laughs> it's Look, fine. it's fine. But, uh, this time around we're going to be talking about just anything really Landar related. Um, I'm going to start off by giving a brief background history of Landar itself. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously from those who've been watching and everything, and my players have noticed, it's a mashup of different timelines and different worlds uh, that I've both thought of and taken inspiration of, for instance, our very own uh, Fluffy here, as far as a lot of his world is big inspiration for mine. Uh, mostly because that was my first campaign I played in. Not counting Adventures League. Uh, I'd taken some inspiration from Critical Role and uh, stuff of that nature, but Landar is essentially a world that something happened. Uh, timeline, unsure of how far back. <clears throat> but some cataclysmic event was happening and a group of mages attempted to solve this issue. But in dead something went wrong and all but one died but that created this world of how to word this created this world where Let's do, let's do you one better here, and we're at this way. The reason it's called Shadows of Landar is everything these guys have faced so far and will continue to face, and that has affected this land, has been shadows of its past. So they are quite literally the shadows of Landar. Every land has a dark past that it does not like to face. It just so happens, this world has quite a few of those. But some unlikely heroes sprung from chaos around them. And here we are. You know, 80 something sessions in. <laughs> oh, God. Ah. Yeah, last week was 81. <coughs> Jesus Christ. <Ooh. laughs> uh, how have y'all put up with me that long? <laughs> how have you put up with us? That's the question. I have a high patience meter. <laughs> you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Have I flipped the table on you guys yet? I've debated to hit the button. I have as well. <laughs> Don't worry. I've debated, but I haven't done it. Um, and it would have been more of a comedy thing, not of actual literal frustration. Um, 
but you guys killed this thing I worked so hard on. Flip. No, you didn't. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> now you're all dead. I win. DM wins. World over. Campaign done. I win. But no. Um. In all seriousness, uh, <laughs> you guys have been a big part about part of me developing this. Uh, from your characters' backstories to ideas you've all given me to uh, the paths you guys have chosen. Uh, believe it or not, some of the paths you've chosen have made it easier for me to tie a lot of stuff together. You're welcome. Um, I wouldn't say that quite yet. You <laughs> still have about five levels to go because I am determined to get you all, all you fuckers to level 20. <laughs> yeah. But no, um... If it wasn't for you guys, I, I wouldn't be able to put this whole thing together. And I think that's also what it boils down to. Landar, Shadows of Landar has become a... It's become more than just the shadows of the land's past. It has become the shadows of all your characters' past. And the challenges you all faced previously and continue to face. Uh, you know, you've been to some pretty iconic cities from much larger games. You've been to iconic cities from, well, some iconic cities from Withra. You've been to some custom cities that I made. I've fully explored all of them. Each city I've created has its own little secrets. But I don't know, my goal with this campaign was to create something fun for you all. While also exploring very interesting aspects of the world of D&D &D, uh, that have not always been fully explored. Because there's a lot that goes untouched sometimes. Now, here's where I'm going to ask. Does anybody have anything they want to ask about any of Thing I just said. Good question. <laughs> I am concerned about what I we am... haven't seen yet. Yeah. See, <laughs> that's always my thing in like <clears throat> any of the campaigns we do is like it's never the stuff that we actually get to see, it's the stuff that we don't get to see or we haven't had time to go deal with that I'm like, okay something's gonna come out of the word work and we're just we're, we're gonna die we're all gonna die <laughs> well like for example jay pointed out how we didn't re-acknowledge that big cloud of <sighs> things after we dealt with that yeah. uh, because uh say going to see what happened to raven became priority mm -hmm. at least for stalver kind of <laughs> yeah. no that became priority i think for like everybody because we were just like uh something is wrong we gotta go yeah mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. To touch on that, though, I will say a lot of the stuff you guys don't finish up here, I will take note of at the end, and you may encounter the outcomes of them in the next one. Just <gasps> fair, and will be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> Considering the characters we're bringing into Echoes and everything like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sil uh, Sylvia cleaning up our mess? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for <clears throat> Sylvia on so many levels. Like, I feel bad for you, Trent. It's fine. It's fine. You I chose that path. Backstory, yeah. You did. <laughs> it definitely really... did. You still have a sugar backstory. I'm... Fully. <clears throat> now I do want to ask though each of you as well um, you know each of you I want your opinions on it 
what have you guys thought so far with everything that's occurred? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Help. Hold on. Hello? Shit. I don't think they can hear me. Uh, 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 hang on. Yeah. I was about to yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Now we can. Now yeah, we can. I did a weird drop thing. So you asked that and then it got silent. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it gotcha. was actually silent during that time, so Oh I was, yeah. I was like, who wants to um, go first? And I, nobody could hear me. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> it's all good. Oh good. I mean I mean we... I could always roll a D four. <laughs> True. Yeah, why not? You could certainly try. All of you are below me. Yeah, uh, All of you are below me in the channel. Did you? Try. Did they? Fluffy. <laughs> Wait, why? I'm concerned. I don't what? know. Okay, I just want to say, whether he's a DM or player, this man still frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Naltavoria. I don't ever know what the fuck is up your sleeve in this campaign. Never do I. <laughs> this is fair. This is fair. I make up half the shit I do. <laughs> on the fucking moment's notice. Yes. Alright, so. Number three. Oh, a drag. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> 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 you ask things to make me do the brain think. <laughs> I mean... Oh. I'm horrible at doing these types of things to begin with. You think I'm gonna make myself do it on my own? What the fuck, drag? What is that? <laughs> it's... <laughs> I don't know if it made it creepy or not. It did. It did. It's oh, Matthew no. with a pride flag. It's Matthew with a pride fl fan. I, I love that so much for him, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <coughs> I'm so fan of that's my love. Oh dear God. It's like, wait a minute. Of course. Mm -hmm. But who? What does brain think about things and stuff? Mm hmm. Things and stuff. That is a very good question. <laughs> It's been an interesting adventure. <laughs> That's one way to describe it, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not a okay, no, My knee's also being slightly distracted by canine. It's uh, weird. You know? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Bark. Come on, the bark. It's just kind of stare to the door, then plop back down. Oh. <laughs> then stare at the door again, then second head plop, and now it's just calm. It hears noises. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely interesting. Definitely. <laughs> I think that's about as much as we're gonna get out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Me, no, me no do word good. <laughs> you know. If you think I do? Why I became a uh, why I decided to make a charismatic and charming character? I have no. <laughs> idea. Why did you let me do this? I, nobody let you do anything. You just did it. I was about to say <laughs> there was no letting anybody do anything in this game. It was <laughs> how could you have let me get expertise in the communication skills? <laughs> you chose that on your own. Yeah. You alone. <laughs> You're right. How did so? Uh, we were looking over your shoulder and we just nodded. <laughs> you're like, uh huh, uh huh. Totally. Oh, he's gonna pick that one. I'm like, well, okay mm. then. The divine power of fable shit. Mm. 
So, next up. So, I may have been over here just rolling as far as to see, get an order. Fun fact, the dice likes you, Drag. <laughs> of course it does. So the first roll was a three, the second roll was a three, <laughs> the third roll was a four, so box your max. Aw, oh, damn it. <laughs> okay. The fourth roll was a three. <laughs> the fifth roll was a one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, personally, I've, like, I love how you tie in things. Like, I never really know what's going to happen next. Usually I can kind of take a guess here and there. But then you'll throw a twist at us. That just makes me go, god damn it. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy that because then, then I'm not fully expecting everything. You know? Mm hmm in most most games, you can kind of like take a guess on what's gonna happen next, but you, you just in yours, it's definitely fluffy, especially. But yours, I I, I can't either. Like when I'm watching campaigns and stuff, it's the same thing. Like I can usually guess what's gonna happen. Like they're gonna run into traps or some bullshit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I heavily enjoy it. <coughs> And I can't wait to see what you're going to do to end it, because I'm both sad and excited. Mm -hmm. I will say, I, I've made, you know, remarks and stuff that it, it, the campaign's getting close to, like, you're entering the endgame stuff. That's more, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. While you're reaching endgame level stuff, the end is still a ways off. You guys still have a lot of things untouched. I know you guys want to touch on. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna try and solve before you come to the end. So I know about how long I expect it to go farther, but at the same time, I don't. Mm -hmm. All depends on what choices you all make. This could go for another 20 sessions. It could go for another 50. We tend to sidetrack a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said it could go for another 50. We see oh, something God, and go we gotta go touch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, um, what am I going just not on the current look I'm not going to go. Yeah, um. I have a feeling Aspire's over there being the person like, don't call me, forget I was here, don't Your call me. Aspire. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> I. <laughs> It's one of those, like, I agree, like, I never know what's going to happen. And a lot of the times, even at the beginning of the sessions, you'll hear me just go like, wait, hold on, what happened last time? Because <laughs> I'm always just trying to remember which god we're trying to go after, because that's what <laughs> this game has become. It's become God Hunt. <laughs> a lot of the times, which is really interesting, because a lot of the times when it comes to D&D games, you don't go after gods until you're, like, level 20. At least. <laughs> and even then, of, it's so rare. Legendary. Yeah. So, like, the fact that we've gone after not one, but, like, I feel like three at this point? Am I wrong? Um, you guys have gone after two. Okay. So Your it's boss just... is a demon lord. Not a guy. I... Yet. Y yet. See, that's that. That's where I'm getting caught up. Like, that's one of those loose threads that we're gonna have to deal with, obviously, because there's just a lot of things. And that's the weird part, is we have a lot of loose threads, but a at the same time, you're still allowing our characters to decide whether or not those loose <laughs> are worth chasing after. That's why us going back to rush after to help Raven 
wasn't necessarily probably something that you didn't expect, but it was still something that, like, we have to consider that this might affect not this campaign, but later, especially now that you've said it out loud. <laughs> well, and we also have taken into consideration if we end up not dealing with Lord Loss, that could also pop up in the next one. Yeah, which I imagine... <sighs> I don't imagine that Lord Loss is not... It, it, I, I feel like his influence might still be a thing later on, just because of how chaotic that entire situation was, even... I think that was one of my favorite arcs, honestly, was going and dealing with the Lord Loss stuff and the boys getting kidnapped and everything like that. Like, that was such... I think that was the very first time that the party realized just how much they cared for each other. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it just... Jade did such a good job on, like, just pushing us to get to that point. He just laid out the scene, and then everybody else took it. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about playing with you guys, is the <laughs> fact that we can take something. Like, the DM will just put something on the table, and then we just run into <coughs> play with it. And DMs just get to sit back and have a good time. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really should still be concerned of how we, like, easily I can play a character that can make everyone else suffer. Oh, I know. Like, that is still one of the quotes that comes up in our chat the most often that hurts me to no end. Because I'm still waiting for something to happen. Like, Latari is not. Latari is perfectly fine and happy and all that stuff. I'm waiting for the thing that's going to break them. <laughs> Just because that's I, I that, I'm that player. Well, so... and that's been thrown into the ether. Um... <laughs> <laughs> David's now Jack the Ripper. <laughs> I already haven't been thinking of things. I know. I know. It's, Bye. Uh, God, the brothers are going to go on a killing spree. I know it. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not ready for that. Did you hide the body, brother? <laughs> what body? <laughs> <laughs> worse the fact that Solberg is now as insane as he is. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't help anything at all. <laughs> Calm down, internet. Calm. Bap I it. see you. I see you going to the red. Stop it. Good. Good internet. Good. Good puppy. She will beat the shit out of you, internet. Stop it. Anyways. Anyways. Now, the person I <laughs> am most, you know, wanting to hear opinion of, because if it wasn't for you pulling me into this D&D &D crap, I wouldn't be DMing this at all. I want you to bear with me. Because I've had summer cleaning all day and my brain is fried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. The day I've had it work, I am, I feel you. I'm <laughs> all up on the third floor where it's the hottest. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if I can string my thoughts together here. <coughs> no dying? Careful. I think... I want to I wanna echo like what a lot of people have said already. Um, there's a lot of things I don't... Half the time I don't know what's going to happen next. Like, I can generally expect certain things. Like, I can, I can expect mostly from the other characters what they'll do. Mm -hmm. Like, I can tell you if something happens to one character or another, I can tell you that, that <coughs> there's going to be a reaction from such such a character and such such a character, mm -hmm. more so than others. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if something happens to David, there's going to be more reaction from Latari and, I think, Stalwerk than there would be from Huffle and No, There's still going to be a reaction from all of them. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a heavier reaction from those two because of the connection. Mm -hmm. It's stronger. Uh, so that part I can always I can usually kind of 
predict. I can't necessarily predict like what the reaction is going to be because it's going to be different based on circumstances. Hmm. But as for like where the companions can go next or some of that, it's it's not something I can predict. Which is it, it's nice because then if you don't know what's going to happen, you can't prepare for it. It makes the genuine <laughs> more of a reaction. And that's one thing, like, I always try to do in mine. Because mm -hmm. I want I want you guys to be able to kind of be able to plan a little bit, but not necessarily know everything that's going to be thrown at you. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's not one thing you seem to have taken into this one, in Spades. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to echo what Aspire said. And my favorite part was definitely that that whole arc there. One, because it was it was different. I mean, there's there's no is answer buts about it. There's no, it was a very different arc than I've ever seen in a campaign. Normally, it's not two players are separated like that. And in fact, we put on the other side. That's not. I mean, there's. There's charms and stuff like that, but that was a full like rewrite of their, of them, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like what they would if they if they had gone a different path. Mm -hmm. So seeing that was also very, <laughs> and the way it was put together, I think was very well done. Uh, the other part I think I liked, uh, I'm trying to remember that was, what, what, what it was. Oh, when was it? Uh, it was just a, it wasn't like a, like an arc. It was just a theme. Um, uh, right. It was, it was one right before that. Uh, the way you described the whole winter crest thing, the, the whole Whitestone Hall, that the way you describe that, and the way you describe a lot of things, you do. You're very. English is hard. Detailed. <laughs> Detailed and very you know, like, gen just generally descriptive. It's something that I try to do as well. and <coughs> It's surprisingly difficult to do because oh, a, me, lot of things, a lot of things you describe you don't think to describe a lot of times because like when, you, when you're describing like Hey, how the weather is, you just know oh, it's cold or it's hot or you don't go into the details normally. So trying to pull that out is something that is difficult <laughs> on my end. Like I have a hard time doing that. Mm -hmm. So it, so I would, I would say that's another thing too, is the descriptions of like, not just the environments, but the enemies themselves. Like, uh, what was the one? Oh, it was the not the ice dragon, but the things we fought out in the forest, the big, uh, the big worm things. Oh yeah, the frost worms. Yeah, the way you described like that entire thing, like you, that whole situation, I I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. That and the NPCs. There's so many just fun NPCs like fucking Yoggle. Yoggle's <laughs> my favorite. I fucking love Yoggle and I will fucking I'll kill anyone who hurts him. All y'all have done such a good job with the NPCs. Like, I, I, I fell in love with a lot of fluffies at the beginning and then Jay brought in a whole bunch of really good ones that I adore. And then Fox came out of left field and was like, here's a whole bunch you can fall in love with. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's not enough Do to not pass apologize. around. Do not apologize. <laughs> but yes. I, I, I will stand by Yoggle's Yoggle is NPC number one. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Yoggle is darkness. <laughs> Yoggle is darkness. You don't know how dark this character is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh. So, since you 
took it that direction and you know started talking about NPCs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to that sort of thing because you guys have encountered a lot of different types of characters. <laughs> yeah, one or two. Just one or two, yeah. Just, uh, just not one or two, you know. Rory and Yoggle, that's who you guys encountered. Um, but no, uh, you know, the MCs I put together for this, uh, even those I know probably won't last a session or two because either they are bad guys or uh, you guys only encounter them a handful of times. I create character sheets for them because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Again, it's one of those things I, I can't always predict what paths you guys are going to take. Um, you know, obviously one of the early on NPCs you guys encountered was Rory. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, custom NPC, not not ones where I, you know I'm pulling them from another campaign or something to help you guys along the way, like Vax or you know any of these other ones. But no, uh, Rory is one of those ones. I, I originally created his character as a player character when I was still debating who I was going to bring in to Fluffy's Elendar campaign. You guys could have put up with a very different character. But I decided clerics are interesting to play. <laughs> um but No Try not to. I, I I don't know why. It's always this time of year this cough redevelops. I think it's because of mm -hmm. <coughs> the back and forth and as humid as the weather is. Yeah. Um, but uh, like I said, I had a lot of fun creating Rory's character, you know, as a potential player character for another campaign. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this character as somebody who is going to help you guys or is going to lead you guys in the right direction should you need help uh, or come to your aid if you need help as sh shown by him holding his action to cast a Luke's Resilient Sphere to save I think David from a Disintegrate I think so at like Disintegrate keeps getting cast at like both David and Hopple, and I'm really tired of it. <laughs> you know? Okay, I'll admit that is not by choice. I roll to see who gets sent. It gets sent to. The dice gods have chosen those two as the side. The, di the dice gods have chosen the squish. Like I said, that is not that's squishy enough. <laughs> hmm? Not that squishy enough. You know. Not anymore. You're not because you took warlock levels. But no, um, okay, where I can resay them. That's I can do that. Yeah, because it actually ties back into that. Uh, I do not know if anybody thing. got a chance to do the tech thing because it didn't pop up in the chat for me. Aspire, I Aspire did. I did. Got it. It. Yeah, did it. Um, but uh, the, the tangent I was going off on. Uh, I, I've created a lot of characters as far as help you guys, but I've also I think I've created more characters that are enemies to you guys because of you guys' backstory. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the NPCs I've created have been able to tie into that. Because your backstories are as... How to... As thorough as they are in some aspects, they're wide open in others. Uh, mm -hmm. To leave some room, some wiggle room to weave things in. Mm -hmm. Um, and come, it come time as far as for backstories to be introduced and to be, you know, thrown at you guys at a high speed. Uh, I, you know, felt creating certain characters or certain types of characters or 
it was a good way to start weaving and tying together all of your backstories. Uh, for instance, the first two characters, like bad guys you guys interacted with. Uh, let's see if I can find their character sheets because I know they're here. Uh, let's see. Maybe they're here. I have too many. I have too many characters. There's too many character sheets in here. Wait a second. What happened? Feel that? They weren't very high level. Apparently, I never finished creating a character for y'all's campaign because y'all got past that area. Uh, I have a level four unnamed paladin. You know. I don't think I deleted their character sheets. <laughs> I'm getting to the top of my character sheets and they're not here. I kind of got buried somewhere. Yeah. Cra level low to high. There we go. Ha. Ah. Because there were two rogues, as far as you guys encountered early on. Mm -hmm. Uh because... Which I believe we left alive. Yeah. You did. Uh, yeah. You guys left him alive. Um, somebody else didn't. Aww. Oh, those two. Yeah, they oh, failed. The yeah, those. Uh, somebody may have killed him because they failed. Um, oh, no. But no, um... It's kind of upsetting that I don't have the character sheets anymore. But that's fine. Uh, they were easy enough to create. They're rogues. They were also a nod to uh, two characters that ended up getting introduced later on uh, because their names were similar. Uh, and that being the introduction of who previously created uh, and well-known characters from another campaign, and that being Vax and Vex um, being pulled in. But, you know, I... Let's see, where is my stuff here I was looking at? Um... But yeah, uh, the Raven tangent I was going on, like, for instance, um, her, her character's father, uh, Lord's character's father. There's certain types of characters I don't like playing. Um. I swear to God. You know, I, I'll play the characters or the Hello? NPCs where... Hello? Oh, are you, oh, no. Is Debbie's it dead. really going to drop right at this part again? I'm sorry. Huh? <sighs> I can't tell if it's the... Me or just OBS or internet. <sighs> Come on. Really? <sighs> anyway, so just, just waiting on it now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine. <sighs> nope, nope. I think it... Mm. Well, I mean, you could still click that it's having issues, because it's literally dropping, like, 2,000 frames. So it stays calm. <laughs> oh, Fingers yeah. crossed. 
Okay. So, you know, we we're talking about uh, the characters and stuff. Um, but yeah, did there's he who shall not be named in any capacity apparently <laughs> is not a fun character to play because he's a dick. Moving on. There you go. We got that out before it dropped. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, now I, I get what you mean Jade like there are certain characters I don't like playing but I like to have those different mm-hmm. types of evil in there too yeah I'm okay with playing it to an extent but if it was ever like a player character I wouldn't be mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah and I, I try not to make a lot of the NPCs seem like they could be player characters uh, because I don't want to get attached to them in case you guys do kill them, which you do normally. Um, <laughs> Listen. My Soren's died how many times? Okay, he deserved it. Okay, first time, yes. He's trying to be different. He's trying. Is that the psychotic changeling? Did we beat? kill him again, though? I don't think, I we don't killed him think again. so. We killed him that once. was a that was a background was thing. I may have just let something slip. Soren well, may have been killed and brought back. Uh, um, <sighs> fine. That's what happens Demon when you piss Daddy off. If that's <laughs> what happens when you piss. Look, Demon Daddy, you mean a little a legitimate god? <laughs> just squished him and brought him back for his entertainment. Hmm. Listen, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. We didn't want to mess with that. But no, um, in all seriousness, though, it, I'm just glad you guys have embraced the NPC, the insanity and the NPCs I have sent you guys away. Uh, and I'm glad, you know, the psychotic idiot that is Yoggle <laughs> has become Fluffy's favorite and... I kind of want to, you know, excluding Yoggle and the other non-custom NPCs. Who are some of y'all's favorite characters you've interacted with? Oh, God. Outside of your own and, like I said, Yoggle and, of course, like the Critical Role people or the people we brought in from Withra. Even though the Rin interaction was hilarious. <laughs> I was Beautiful, it was golden, but it's still technically a player character. Yeah. Uh, huh. This time I'm not Hard. rolling. You guys just jump in where you think you can answer. I would I would mm. say some of my favorite characters are the ones that like actually have fun with Stalwerk with for the sparring and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like any of them, he it just is fun for. For me, but I know it's fun for him because I know how he's supposed to think. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, immediately drop here in the next two minutes. Behaveth thyself. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Favorite um, NPCs. Yeah. And also, your favorite NP- NPCs you've interacted with, but also your favorite enemies you've encountered and interacted with. Mm. I'd have to think about the anime one. Shoot, you could even say your least favorite enemy to interact with. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of which one did I like personally have fun fighting whether Fair. my character did or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've met so many NPCs, and I unfortunately have this curse of I love them all, typically, and or just despise them, depending on where they're supposed to fall on the spectrum of things. <coughs> and unfortunately, a lot of my favorite interactions were, like, either in some of the Critical Role characters that you brought in, or it, in the Rin. The Rin one was still one of my favorites, just because of how funny. <laughs> um... I would say yeah. one of my favorite fights was Loki. Yeah. That was that was kind of cool. Yeah. Stalwart had fun with that one. 
<laughs> it fair. Yeah, that that one was an interesting one to try and put together because I wanted something different, mm-hmm. but not too different. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Because obviously he's a sneaky, conniving trickster. So he he's not going to be very forward with what he does. No. He's going to have his brute that's going to do majority of the stuff, and that's where I brought in the Nordic Troll. Um, which, those of you watching, the Nordic Troll was a was my take on the troll bosses you fight in the newest God of War game. Uh because those are fun fights and just they look like monsters and they <laughs> feel like it when you fight them. Mm-hmm. So it it's one of those things. I enjoy those sort of things. Um. <clears throat> I think one of the reasons why I have such a hard time in picking NPCs that I love or that I hate is because... Even with the villains, this is <coughs> every because like when I provided you with Nikor and everything like that, he was not when he first showed up, he was not what I was expecting or thinking about and things like that, which worked so well to what he was supposed to be. And he's turned into this just antagonist that keeps popping up, not because he's still alive. <laughs> But just because he still exists, a lot of the villains that we come across in in Landar, it's they still occupy a part of our thoughts a lot of the times because the ones that really got us were the ones that got in our heads, especially at least for my character because that that's a lot of how she operates. Her strength is her mind, but at the same time, it is her biggest. <coughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually have no idea what, I'm, what Stalwerk would do if something actually happened to Nall and he ended up on the other side of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It might send him a little overboard, I'll be honest. <laughs> Honestly, mm-hmm. that's such a fair response. Like, that's the craziest part about a lot of our player characters in this particular one is while we've played characters that are very, very tied together before Landar, this one feels a whole lot on a more deeper level, on a stronger one, too, where it just... I don't know how to describe it, where, like, everybody's so much more willing to go that extra distance. Mm -hmm. And, like, (laughs) Stolver, I half expect that he's gonna do something reckless and get himself killed. He has- Yes. I think he has yet to see any of you guys get killed. Is the thing. Yeah, that's the thing, is, like, Stolver is the one that's typically died the most in this campaign, which is sad, but kind of funny in a weird way, (sighs) because he is the one that'll go into that whole thing and everyone is just like Stalbert, just stop, sit down (laughs) (laughs) sit boy, sit (laughs) it's why Nal is the way he is at this point it's just, it's a constant thing Mm -hmm. just makes me think of that sit, ubu, sit (laughs) (laughs) sit, ubu, sit (laughs) down boy I, I hate to compare characters and stuff like that, but it was a lot like how Rin and Stryker were for a long time because Stryker kept dying and <coughs> dying with Rin. It was just a thing. Like, there was nothing now, that could be done about it. Give Stryker. Stalwart's still a little bit different. Give, give Stryker credit in the sense of he didn't go into it with the thought that he was going to die. And a lot of it was accidental no. situations where he just got caught in the wrong spot in the wrong time. Yes. It, it was one of those, it was very different situationally and very different character-wise because Stalvirk obviously was like, I'm probably going to die, but I'm going to do it anyways. Stryker yeah. Like, Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, Stalberg goes into it like he knows it's reckless and he knows that he's not immortal. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, that's still one of <laughs> while while Stryker was more of the he did tr he did actually try to be cautious. Yeah, <laughs> it just didn't always work out in his favor. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. The downside of being the <laughs> low health character. <laughs> mm hmm. Good thing he married the cleric. <laughs> that usually wasn't there whenever he died. <laughs> No, that was you the know. worst part. I was, that, that's probably that, that. That's a whole other conversation in of itself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have that conversation another time when we're not talking about it. <laughs> um, oh man! So, and Fluffy you said Yoggle's your favorite, uh, and that you would die to protect Yoggle. Oh. Forever. <laughs> Who's your favorite enemy? Hmm. There's a lot of enemies. We've made a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. Uh what do I favorite? Or the one you like to hate the most. There. <coughs> This is a real good question because it's like I'm trying to think. Yeah, because you guys have encountered a lot of enemies in the sense that they actually are bad people. Um, you know, you've encountered the people that may not agree with you guys or certain aspects, but they were just there by circumstance. Yeah. Um. For I'll instance, say... that that one paladin, as far as you guys encountered, uh, when Striker, mm -hmm. I mean not Striker, uh, you just said Striker so many times. But... <laughs> uh, when Stalwart became a vampire, you guys encountered this paladin. Um. But and that was him doing his job. Uh mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't really enemy. Yeah. But you know, you you face people like Spire said, Nikor. You know, you've encountered, you know, Fox brought up Loki. You've encountered Lindell, uh, Soren at first. Hmm. Hard to pick. It really is. <sighs> I think. I think it's better to I separate it in the two, the two two things. Mm -hmm. The one I liked the hate <coughs> more was definitely uh, Lindell, mm -hmm. just because it was an interesting character, just from like a character like looking at from a player to a at, looking at, at the NBC. Nall hated the fuck out of her. Like she never just Nall hates her. Mm -hmm. For reasons. Oh, yeah. well, no, no yeah. reason in particular. <laughs> whatsoever. But like as like a player, I really liked that I like I liked the fact that the, the character It wasn't that he was forced to hate her, it was just what she did made him hate her and it was a very well I, I liked how that was done. Mm -hmm. As for like fight wise God, there's been so many fights. <laughs> I want to say... I want to say I liked the... Um... What was the one? It was in that... Uh, I think it was in the... T it was in, well, in the tower. I don't know if it was the... Nine Hells one, or anything like that, but the, uh, the one with the wizard? That would have been uh, Ganimer. Uh, yeah, that, had, was the, that, that was the Nine Hells. Where he had, like, the similar... I liked that fight, because it was, like, it was very much boss phase as 
Mm-hmm. And I liked I actually I liked how that actually it it didn't it didn't feel stretched out mm-hmm. or forced, but it also felt like he was very prepared and very like he knew what he knew how to do things. Mm-hmm. And it it it, it flowed. I like mm-hmm. that. That was my, one of my, that fight. I think out of all of them, is my favorite. Yeah, he was, Ganimer was definitely, the way I created him. He, he had the nickname the Mad for a reason. He was a very paranoid person. Um. So that simulacrum, and I can't remember the other spell off the top of my head. <coughs> I think it's clone. Mm-hmm. The the way he, him doing that. That was almost an every other day ritual that he did because of how paranoid he was. Mm-hmm. Um, he never knew when somebody was going to come and try and take him out or uh, something was uh, going to. Sorry, I saw a buffer and I think it was on my end. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, he never knew when somebody was going to do anything against him or. When he would have to try and escape. Yeah. <coughs> what about you, Drag? Um. What about you, Drag? Pull the Drag quote. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I can show you in front of <coughs> A buffalo. Uh, mm, yes, buffalo. the buffalo. Honestly, the second time that oh, that once happened recently, it's interesting. By me, <laughs> yes. Screamy books. It's it's all it's all on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. Honestly, as as far as favorite am, uh, enemies go, kind of actually want to go with David's dad on my end. <laughs> I I can agree with that. Too. It, was, yeah. it was because of that asshole that I discovered wow, I could be a dick. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That, oh. that that's one of my real favorite ones too, because of how the it wasn't like a straight fight at first, it was like we had to get to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that entire I just that arc <laughs> it still yeah. hurts. It still that... hurts me as a player to this day. <laughs> <coughs> Probably one of the first times David's tapped into the fuck it, this asshole needs to die mode. You know, mm-hmm. fair. Mm-hmm. So. He was very grim dark for like a hot minute after after all of that, like yeah. it was, it was a different thing entirely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just think, it'll it'll be worse if he loses Latari. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. He's. Uh, I mean, you've already seen his reaction to losing his brother again. Yeah. And not yeah, being able to bring him back. Place. <laughs> yeah, he he went to death yeah. sticks for his brother. I'm scared, honestly. What that? That's what... <laughs> this I, is I when David this... becomes the arsonist. <laughs> honestly, yes. I, it's one of those like because we've seen him light things on fire for Latari on a number of occasions, and it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> no, I can just see it now. Something like that happens. Next thing you know, we're we're. You find David at the charred remains of what was an enemy base, going like, "Bad time you got here." <laughs> oh God. The I think the both good news and the bad news, because I'm putting this in the either, which is the reason it's bad news. But the good news is, is Latari hasn't gotten that close to death, except for like the very early on, and then the one fight with like Ace and like the circus people. And stuff like that. Like th- those were the only two times that she's actually gotten rather close to actually dying. Uh, 
to like, my memory. She also, wasn't there also like a lot of damage to everyone around in the Dune fight? <sighs> I can't remember 100% on that one. Yes, actually. Which, yeah. Which fight was There's that? Dune. There's oh, Dune. There's yeah. Chain God. She that wasn't actually to close you. to death. I think she was like. She was controlled. She was definitely. Yeah, she was right. controlled. But, like, dying wasn't... Control is, like, a constant issue with her. Which I found really interesting, and it's still something that I'm <laughs> very intrigued which... by. Sorry, oh, that's to... the same issue, though. Like, control, yeah. stunned, things mm -hmm. like that. It's it's terrible. Well, see, it's funny you bring up the Therestin thing, by the way. Um, Recently, I had actually found some split stat blocks uh, for somebody who did an encounter where partially released, fully released, stuff like that. The partially released one, the DCs were similar to what I had had. The full released, um, let's just say there would have been no saving. Yeah. Well, there the, was already, like, a The DC was, like, 25. For fully released God of Chaos, <laughs> Darkness, Like, you have the option to roll that? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't at that point, because I because of what had happened Shit, in what a minute at that point yeah prior to the jump and everything yeah, right. like that when we started the there's dune the actual there's dune arc because of what happened in barovia and everything like that like that had already set a whole bunch of stuff in motion it got worse mm -hmm. <laughs> when we when the party came back together and everything like that which was technically what everybody warned her it's just like ah! <laughs> And then she's like, oh yeah, no, that's Yeah, <laughs> and the, that was the thing, was that while Stalwerk was upset because of what his task was, he was more ticked off that she would allow herself to be so open to something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is always an interesting thing to think about for her, in because she doesn't like being controlled, and she sees how it affects Stalwerk and everything, and she it's not her favorite thing. She doesn't enjoy it. She does not want anything to do with it, which is why she created the pins in the first place. It was just one of those things where, unfortunately, in the moment, she was way too weak-willed to not ask for that help, which it's really sad that she's not one of those characters because I've got several characters that would reach out to like gods and stuff like that. Latari isn't one of those, despite the fact that she's got Nal who has Saren Ray on his side and <laughs> several others that have been like influence in her life that's like, hey, the gods do actually care. She's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. And she, see they, they don't. Even even with Lolf though, it was an actual conversation he had with her to get the offer. Yeah. Um <laughs> before and he had a choice to to accept it or not. Mm -hmm. <coughs> With yeah, it, it, I think that's another thing that's really interesting about our party is like at this point, even very early on, a lot of us were just very much like screw everybody, the world will burn. But then it was, screw everybody but these specific people, the world are still gonna burn. And it's gotten a little bit better, but even so, it's just... The fact that we don't necessarily let a whole lot of influence in unless we choose it. Well, Stalwart's always personally been a help anyone that seems to be in need mm -hmm. type character. Which is kind of interesting being in this party with the 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 screw the world thing <laughs> because he's yeah. he's kind of the opposite in a lot of ways yeah. because of that yeah. and so he does understand where people come from it's not that he doesn't listen mm -hmm. it's that he sees a situation that this person needs help or this person can't defend themselves but I can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Attitude, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder, like, if the way he acts kind of comes off that he doesn't care about how everyone else feels. He does consider that. Mm -hmm. He he really does, and it's it's a tough choice whenever I'm having to make his decisions. 
because he would yeah. he wants to not hurt anybody else in this group or in his party but he also doesn't want to see other people get hurt you know mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah And that's, like, Null's definitely one of the ones that's more, they don't necessarily want to be the hero. They don't want to, they care, the reason they do any of this stuff is because of the group. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that he, it's not that he doesn't care about, like, others that get in danger and stuff like that. He does have, he does care. He just... A lot of the times, it's 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 more just based on like how he was the life that he had before this. He didn't have a lot of people. He had his family. That was really it. Mm -hmm. Everyone else kind of at one point or another shunned him pretty much, other than like one other person mm -hmm. until he met the group. So that's kind of where a lot, I think a lot of his. Well, fuck the world, because the world doesn't want didn't want to do anything to do with me before. Yeah, now you're the hero. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly they do kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it's that. Like, oh, you you didn't want me before, but now you want me. Okay, well, f now you're taking what I like mm -hmm. in this world. It's like no. Yeah, Stalberg Stalberg's kind of like that too. Where... <laughs> He did feel like he was such a loner for a while to where mm -hmm. he didn't necessarily care about people until he met this group. Uh, once he mm -hmm. lost his family. Mm -hmm. He cared what happened to people. He just didn't care like about them. Like he wouldn't get to know them or anything like that, even yeah. if he had helped. Yeah. <clears throat> it was like, I helped you. Okay, and now we go with it. Just separate ways. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, that was a lot. What Latari was like too at the very beginning, because she was used to bouncing around and whatnot, and she has empathy towards a lot of things, but she's still very reluctant to do this whole saving the world thing because she's like, "Isn't there somebody stronger than us? Isn't there somebody more qualified to be doing this? We're just a bunch of ragtag people, and I don't want to see us die for people that don't care what happens to us or won't know that we died." <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. She, yeah. she's so angry about a whole <laughs> bunch of different people and it's not their fault it's just how things happened mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which yeah technically there obviously are people that are stronger and more qualified to do it you know uh, so again Fox Machina is in this campaign but but as they've proven in their own campaign they are also not immortal <laughs> no they're not um, but, no, see, the way I'll put this is, it's kind of spoilery, but it's not, at the same time, not. You guys were unknown to the Big Bad until something happened. Oh, dear. Um, he's still trying to figure you all out. When you guys entered that cave, you became known to him. Right. Before that... He knew about Vox Machina. He knew their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. That's why fate didn't choose them to go after him. This party is so screw fate, though, at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, every oh, single are. one of us like, <coughs> was ready to spit in the face of the Raven Queen <laughs> yeah. before she died. Mm -hmm. but see, and that's the thing. Um, you guys don't care what fate thinks. Mm -hmm. You know, to a point, neither does Fox Mock, you know, but they've witnessed what fate is. Yeah. Um. We have chosen to continue to be in denial of what fate is. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. that was the whole thing through Campaign 1 of Critical Role. They witnessed fate at every turn. And they came to acknowledge it, whether they wanted to or not. Um, and like I said, the big bad knows their weaknesses, knows where to hit them where it hurts, knows who to go after first. Mm -hmm. Get rid of certain people, you get rid of the backbone, they falter. 
he's not sure which one of you is the backbone yet. That's the funny thing about our group is like <coughs> you take out any one of us and everybody's going to go nuclear. Like mm -hmm. there is no ifs, ands, or buts. And mm -hmm. that's if the I really dangerous part. <laughs> If I had to say who was the backbone, like, just from the way to keep the party together, Stalberg is what keeps Null kind of together, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Null, though, I would say is the backbone for the rest of the party. So it's kind of a mix of both of them, in that, if you look at it like that. Yeah. Which has always been the case. They were <coughs> mom and dad, like, way back when. Yeah, the jokes have joke turned out true. Time. It, it, yeah. it, it worked out in a really weird roundabout way because yeah. both mm -hmm. of them have such a weird way of dealing with people, but it works. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, like what you said, where Null's Stalwart's the backbone, like the, what keeps Null focused and Null's at the backbone. I feel like even if, if, if something happened to Null, I feel like a lot of the party whatever. would break. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever happened, wh wh I feel like whatever did it to Null isn't going to like what happens next. No. No. Like I said, it I, would probably I, I, send Stalberg over the edge. <laughs> yeah. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. That's why I'm just like, nobody wants to mess with us. And when they think they do, they're wrong. Because by the time they figure out, like, oh, this is how this party works. <laughs> They don't realize just how nuclear some of these characters are willing to go once that button gets pushed. Mm -hmm. Once that whole thing goes over. Like, Stalwart is willing to probably go on a mass spree of, like, burn it all down if something were to happen and all. I'll be Vice honest, Stalwart might end up in that, that denial stage. Mm. Like, that, that crazy denial that yeah, Null's like not dead. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I just... <sighs> this party is crazy. And, like, Drag was saying about David just turning into the full-on arsonist. Like, this party is willing to do really dark crap for each other. Mm -hmm. Which I can't say They're... about a lot of parties that I've played in or seen before, which is really interesting. I, I want to just pull back real quick and kind of compare this this party to the Whiffler party for a moment. The Whiffler party was very much I don't want to say your typical heroes, but they were very your typical heroes in the sense that they would they put everyone else before themselves for, for the most part. They still cared a lot about their, their friends and their families but they put the world a lot ahead of themselves for the most part. Whereas, like, this group is very much anti-hero, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll help the world, but they don't necessarily do it because it's to help the world. It's because they live in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're the guardians of the galaxy of this of this whole thing. <laughs> like, they, the Wither group was basically the Avengers, and then we've got guardians of the galaxy of, like, why do you want to save the galaxy? Because... Because I'm one of the idiots that lives in it. <laughs> now I will I will say that there were I know that um, Stryker, for example, was very selfish, and especially oh, yeah. when it came to Rin, it, he was definitely very selfish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And his kids and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, he was still more of the the hero type that he. I think he only ever really did maybe one or two dark things in his time. Yeah. <laughs> one really dark listen and, and the thing is too it's like even despite <laughs> the selfishness of any of the characters because there were it was not just strike there was other characters that were selfish yeah oh yeah like yeah everyone had everyone had their selfishness but they still they always did it for other reasons like for yeah. other people they they wouldn't they weren't the group that would just sit by and not do something if something was going on in the world. Yeah. Like, if, if our group wasn't directly affected by it, our our group would be like, nah. Yeah. yeah. I, that, 
I mean, both Nal and Latari have been just, like, exasperated by this point of, like, everything going on. <laughs> yeah, Stalwart's crazy point, side has, has kind of gotten to the point of he wants to, but he now kind of listens a bit more as well because of the insanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it's both a bad and a good I thing. Like, I think with like... Mm -hmm. You say exasperated. I'm sorry, I feel like Nall's more... Uh, <laughs> he's more burned out, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just... Uh, to him, and this is this is nothing like... Because this is just the way the, the world's been. Every turn he takes, there's always something. And he just feels like he's not making a dent, effectively. Mm -hmm. But that's just because, like I said, just, there is a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There really is. It, if you're looking from the from the character's perspective, it's like I just dealt with that. Now there's this. What the fuck? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like. First, there was a dragon. Now there's a dragon. Bigger it's, dragon. It's purple. <laughs> yeah, they got their one their one break, and then that was really their only calm time. Yeah, yeah. And even that was like only semi calm. It was prep for what was coming in all technicality, because like Solver mm -hmm. and all took time to go find Nal's family and do a couple of other things. Atari spent the time training and whatnot. David was cleaning things up at his home, and just, like, the only real celebrations we were getting during that time was the fact that Huffle got married, and then Nall and Stalvert got married. Like, that was, that was the happy that we had for, like, two seconds before everything just decided to crash back down on us. Which, technically, we were expecting, but not in the way that it showed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I'll be 100% honest, I was waiting, Lotari was waiting for this thing to just full on take over her brain and her not be able to do anything about it. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like at this point, Null is just. The main reason Null's doing it, besides because of the group, is just to. He just wants to get it over with. <laughs> He's like, if I keep pushing, eventually there won't be nothing there. So I just keep swinging this bright, glowy sword until there's nothing moving. <laughs> you know. I can guarantee you, if he ever, for whatever reason, <coughs> lost his divine soul parts, it would not go well. Because I feel like the rest of it would become paladin and it wouldn't go well. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> and it wouldn't be a good thing. Because <laughs> it would either be a conquest or vengeance paladin. Ooh, uh, you know. Because uh, <laughs> the one's based on fear. And he is a frightening motherfucker, despite his fucking looks. I know. Like, if you're on his good side, it's fine. But, like, you're on his bad side. He's he's actually kind of terrifying, despite his... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing I love. Like, if you look at... It's 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 the same for any of these characters. Like, take Latari, for example. She doesn't look imposing at all. No. Until she's pointing that gun at you. Yeah. Uh, David doesn't look imposing at all until he lights someone on fire. Huffle doesn't look imposing until she fucking blights or lightning bolts you. Mm -hmm. But Stalberg's the only one that does look imposing, and he really is. And he's probably He'll the least one. Yeah, it, 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 he's the least one unless you piss him off or think that he's playing a game with you at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's the gentlest of all of us. It's kind of so, sad. Yeah. See, being, being we're talking about your party's characteristics and stuff, I I'm going to skip around to another bullet point I have here. Uh, it has to do with as far as your character's backstories and how and why I tied them together. So it's a fun fact. 
And I want you guys to take a guess if you can guess which char- which of y'all's characters this is. One of your characters <laughs> in particular made it fairly easy for me to tie all your backstories together. Jeez, I, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> and it's because of an underground portion of their ba- of their backstory that had a lot of connections to a lot of other evil things. That sounds like either David or Stalbert. Yeah. It could actually be David's. Wow. Who is muted. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations, David. Your calls are good. Thing. <laughs> hi, buddy. Hey, hi. You're the cause of all of our pain and suffering. Congratulations. True, because David's thing, I I built Stalwerks off of David's a bit. Mm -hmm. When we had originally talked about the character. So yeah, that does make sense. (laughs) Because if you look at, uh, David left his father's because he didn't want to be involved in that stuff. Um, His father, however, had so many connections in the underground stuff as far as dark deals, uh, magic, and stuff like that. Uh, For instance, he was able to obtain his poison that was used to uh, knock out all of you and would enable him to take both David and Stalberg. He got that from someone you guys just recently killed in Silas. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Cusco's poison. Poison intended for Cusco. That poison. Yeah. But no, yeah. um... But no, um, you know, and we go even further than that. Uh, because there's some things you didn't find out about him, but you may find out about him later on, because some things tend to forgive. Some things tend to repurpose. Repurpose. I don't like that <laughs> word in how but you're no, he, saying it. He had, you know, connect again. Certain aspects of this campaign I had planned out or had loose ideas for from the beginning. Um, it was just the roadmap it was going to take to get to him, and when they were going to show up, or how it was going to interact with the rest of the story. Um, but David's backstory in particular, like I said, his father's tied to uh, tied to Silas and the Briar Woods, which is a tie to Vecna. And turns around and there's a tie to Ripley, who had a tie to the father who shall not be named for reasons pertaining to stuff and things, um, which tied to Raven. Um, which was a character, you know, her character was supposed to be a couple sessions and done. She was supposed to be a guest character, and you guys all just meshed so well, it just didn't end. Um, which was fine. Uh, you know, and then obviously, you know, like Fox had stated, uh, Stalver, you know, being David's brother, there's that automatically, and then that branches off into, uh, his family. Uh, and the people that branch off of that. It, like, it, a central backstory. I'm not saying his is the central backstory of everything at Landar, because it's not. Um, It comes to a point where you don't know where that central point is because of how many branches there are. That you can't trace back to a singular thing. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the stuff was able to easily be branched off and create all these different ties that I could do to, you know, tie together 
bad things that happened up with uh, Null, because, for instance, Null's blood being taken because of the celestial blood in it. That was to try and resummon mm -hmm. Vecna. I figured. Um, because that's where you guys first encountered Delilah Briarwood and Soren. And yeah. that mountain to the far north, or... Yeah, to the northwest of Ostros. Yeah. Um, Ostros. <laughs> yeah. In which, again, you know, Aspire and four of you guys picked Ostros as your character's hometown. Um, David and Stalvark, your guys picked Deus Dock as your hometown. Yeah. Uh, Raven picked it as Imperius, which, you know, would make sense for a noble. Um, Huffle would obviously be wherever I ended up placing Allura, which it made sense to me to place her in either Whitestone or Amon, and I kind of rolled for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that and it placed her in Whitestone. Uh, but it... All these things tied together and made this roadmap of, okay, so if they do this, they're going to encounter this and this people, and then these people might get involved because of the ties to these people. It, it, it made for interesting things that could have occurred, and it still may occur, uh, depending on again interactions. Because when you think you've dealt with somebody for the last time, you may just started dealing with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question that kind of backtracks a little. Uh-huh. Which is more terrifying? Realizing you pissed off the sorcerer who's lit, uh, lit someone else on fire, or you pissed off the sorcerer and he lit himself on fire? <laughs> Honestly, the second one. Because that's just something that takes people aback sometimes, you know. Just, just seeing somebody ignite, it's like, uh, what? Hot on the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 it's one of those... And now I'm on fucking fire. <laughs> exactly. It, it's one of those things, you're, you're suddenly taken aback when you see an enemy light themselves on fire, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Processing. Wait. That's what? That's something you don't really want. No, exactly. Um, but yeah, that <clears throat> definitely the latter as far as on those choices. Uh, you know, you guys have mentioned as far as a, you know a lot of your favorite. It, it seems a consensus is the strongest arc so far has been that uh, David and Silver being kidnapped. Hmm. Um, outside of that, what has been your favorite use of a back of a backstory? Mm. I feel I've already cheated that with my boss choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's my favorite use of the backstory. <laughs> so like, I know it was my character's like biggest what the fuck. Uh, his fucking father and uncle just randomly showing up <laughs> <laughs> when he thought they were dead for years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a that was a, a twist. I made jokes about it, but I didn't think you were actually gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. There's certain things I like to just sit and wait on, wait on. Because when certain comments or jokes, you know, like you said, you made, you made the jokes, the passing comment, as far as about them just showing up. I let that sit and sit and sit to the point where, okay, it's been this long. It's not probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then I pull the trigger on it because it's like, gotcha. 
because it does still give that shock. Oh. Um, because at that point, you don't think it's going to happen. And you think it is just going to go straight with what the backstory of the character, of what they think, that they're dead and they're gone. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the DMs in the chat. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> what is this know, repurpose you speak of? <laughs> oh, trust me, I, people have been re certain people have been repurposed in my mm -hmm. I, because of your choices. I think Mikor, I, I same thing as Drag, where it's just one of those like the father of the boss thing. Like it's just kind of a cheat. But at the same time, Nikor is one of my favorite parts of the backstory that got brought up because it it brought in a whole different aspect of my character and everything like that and how she views relationships with other people and especially the party because how all of a sudden she was like, listen, this is a problem. And they're like, okay, we got this. <laughs> like, there was no question. Mm -hmm. And it was very, which, at the end of it, when everything was all said and done, and in all technicality, Nikor <coughs> is actually dead. Um, yeah. Well, it, oh god. It, it it was one of those like that was why she felt so guilty after the fact because she's like. It wasn't that she didn't trust all these people because they felt that that was what was happening when in reality Latari was just like no I didn't trust myself and that's just the constant theme of what she's been going through and it all started with that one guy in her backstory and it just exploded at that point with that conflict yeah I I, I feel like Stalbert was both open ended but also not because I, I did say that he was very much a loner in his mm -hmm. backstory. So he didn't really know or let anybody get close to him. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when I say his fear is like losing people, it's more of that fear of when he was a kid, he couldn't do anything to protect yeah. his family. And he's still worried he can't do that even now. Mm -hmm. Which it's you why he pushes actually witnessed. Himself. Yeah, it's why he pushes himself so hard mm -hmm. to fight for, to protect everybody. Because that day he chose to run away, and ever since he's chosen to not run away and sacrifice himself instead because he doesn't mm -hmm. want to see the same outcome. So it's a fear. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's a fear that drives him to protect. Yeah. Um, which is a good way to look at it. Uh, I'll be honest, I you think know. he's one of the reasons that you guys don't die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, it, it is Null and Stalwart. It is both Null healing us and making sure we stay up, but also Stalwart trying to, like, make sure that if anybody's going to be taking damage, it's going to be him. Yeah. Which, considering the fact that we have so many glass cannons in the party, it's probably <laughs> one of the very many reasons, like... That, that it's so huge that he does what he does. Mm -hmm. Because I mentioned Huffle because she's not here, but she's one of the biggest glass cannons as the wizard rogue and everything like that. Like, <coughs> she doesn't have a lot of hit points. Her, her AC is so low and everything like that. But if people fail any check when she casts a spell, their ire should technically go to her because they realize that she's just throwing damage at them and it's not just i save and i'm fine no 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 you save, but you're still taking half of like 50. <laughs> yeah stalbert gets frustrated when he's not the main target because he knows he can take a lot of those hits yeah compared to a lot of other people um he's not it's a you know he's not so worried about latar and Nal now but in the beginning he definitely was Oh, yeah. Now, now it'd be more like David and Huffle would be his his mm -hmm. get the attention off of them. 
Which yeah. makes sense. Nal and Latari were able to keep up with him eventually, and we're just like, hey, we got this. Like, yeah. we have your back. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Nal somehow fucking... <clears throat> okay, uh, this is a quick check. Like, I don't know how the fuck he got as much HP as he did, but he fucking did. <laughs> Dude, you rolled, you rolled well. Stalwart guy rolled a lot of maxes points. on, too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Even with the tough, I'm still only rolling a D6. <laughs> yeah. So, we go from that to this other one here. To keep up with the way you guys have been able to handle things and, you know, just breeze through certain encounters. I've had to step up my game in creating things, um, and, and it's kind of reinvigorated my creative process with stuff for D&D in general. Um, uh, there's a lot of homebrew creations and creatures and stuff I've thrown at you guys. Um, and I'm going to use the word Aspire has stated she doesn't like people, doesn't want the DMs to say. Uh, <laughs> I've repurposed a lot of different versions of things that I found from other campaigns or uh, from other sources. I've repurposed the hell out of them mm -hmm. to do as far as different things or to up the amount of stuff they can do. I have uh, just just to handle you guys. Yeah, I have some characters that I think can handle, like, your party and Rift, too, for that <laughs> same reason. Um, mm -hmm. But you guys also haven't tried to fight those specific characters because you think they're only one class. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. for instance, uh, I can go to my character sheets here uh, real quick. Um, You guys fought, let's see... What class were you? I know you were a warlock, but what was the other one? You know, you had uh, the one person that was a right hand, because Puffle's mom had two right hand people. Mm. One was the fire genasi barbarian, and the other was the water genasi monk warlock. Mm. Um. Those two, I altered a lot of things about them. Uh, fun fact, the Water Genasi Monk Warlock had a walking speed of 65 feet. <laughs> By the way, that wasn't altered. I shrunk her walking speed. <laughs> but I'm looking at that, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that is a high walking speed. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Monks, monks in general get monks really are high. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but, you know, not only characters like them, but you go into Lindell. I altered a lot of things. Uh, you know, not even enemies, but uh, allies like Lilwyn, Envir. Those, they had their base classes, yes. But there was also some homebrew aspects because I did make them as far as dragons. I, I gave them homebrew aspects, for instance, a prismatic bolt. That's a spell both of them have. Uh, but it's... They are able to cast it because in their human forms, it, it's fine. Um... There we go. Hopefully it's good till we finish. Nah. Yeah, I was like, it don't have much more as far as uh... here we have a couple more things. That's it uh, that I wanted to actually touch on, mm -hmm. and it would leave it open to you guys. Um, but yeah, I you know, I've altered a lot of things in order to make. To make some fun changes and alterations to the gameplay aspects of it. Uh, for instance, I've created a lot of spells as far as that you guys have encountered. Uh, I've used homebrew spells from other campaigns that, you know, it have been repurposed a lot uh, by other campaigns and stuff. 
you know, I've used homebrew spells from Critical Role. I've used homebrew things that I've found uh, stuff that I've been sent. Uh, <coughs> it it's all part of the trying to balance a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, and some things you guys haven't even encountered or met or anything. And that's just going to roll over to the next campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I keep teasing you guys with the baby Kraken I made. Um, that's going to roll over to the next campaign. Yay! Because there's nothing you guys have really encountered ocean-wise yet. Yeah. We would need it um, to be out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's going to roll over. Uh, there are certain spells you guys haven't encountered yet. I'm just going to roll those over. Uh, you know, I, I could throw them in as something that an enemy here later on has. This is a higher level spell. No. I'm just going to roll it over. It's like, okay, this person has a, you know, that kind of thing. It's going to be their signature spell or something. Um, but yeah, it, it became fun for me to try and create things that would throw a little bit of challenge in all's way. Because I know you guys have fun trying to figure things, figure out how to do things. As, stress, as stressful as it can be sometimes. Mm. I, I I know you guys have fun trying to figure out ways to get around something or to deal with the situation or um, how are we going to kill this thing other than all out attacks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's one of... Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I, I've always enjoyed. But it's definitely something. As far as I, I like doing for you guys, just to give that fun little aspect. But, you know, we, we go from that to, let's see. I mentioned no, no. there's a lot of loose ends. Uh, by a lot of loose ends, I mean Lord Loss, which I meant to say this earlier. Uh, now that I've said the name out loud, I need to dip back to the homebrew creations. Lord Loss is actually a creature slash big bad I've Taken from a book series I actually really enjoyed. Uh, it's the big bad of the first book of the Demonata series by Darren Chan. Mm. He he feeds on fear. He feeds on sadness. He feeds on loss. Um, the loss of will to go on. Stuff like that. In that book, he's a demon lord. He, he legitimately is head of demons in other planes. Mm. Uh, so I figured it'd be it'd be a very easy thing to transfer over and give that twist to make an actual demon lord character for D and D. Uh, because there isn't really anything like him in it. <laughs> so it would give an interesting and unique experience for you guys to encounter. Um, there's creatures that deal with sadness and fear. and But it's the way he does. He gets stronger. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's one of the loose ends you guys still need to tie up. Uh, and if you don't hear, it just rolls up. <clears throat> that's the way... Any future campaigns of mine are going to be. Uh, if you if you don't deal with everything, that's fine. It'll just roll over and it's just be more challenging to deal with when the time comes. 
you know, but you see you have that loose end. As an interesting fact, it's kind of funny the stream kept throwing a certain quote at me earlier. Because <laughs> there's Vectin's journal still out there. Yeah. You guys aren't sure who actually took it. Because it wasn't the Briarwoods. There's a lot of things that we don't know what happened to the, the items. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's that. There's... Let's see. <clears throat> the storm cloud in the hells. Where there's never really any weather. <coughs> Other than you like acid rain and stuff like that, because yeah. Mm. Um let's see, I know there's other ones. Even as a DM I'm sitting here thinking and not able to remember anything off the top of my head. But I'm sure I'll remember when you guys do make decisions or encounter certain people. I I'll remember. Mm -hmm. um, it's also kind of hard to remember all the loose ends we have as a party because, like, mm -hmm. once we don't consider, once our characters don't consider it like that much of a threat anymore, I feel like it it's so easy to forget. Mm -hmm. That particular yeah, thing being a, being a problem that we should have dealt with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I will admit, some of these loose ends are something you probably probably safer you didn't deal with them when they came up. Yeah. Uh, but... For instance, Lord Loss. Um... Uh, yeah. Anyways. His uh... first appearance was a problem, and while we didn't. We thought we kind of dealt with him, but we didn't. We knew that wasn't completely over. Mm -hmm. And I think the characters have kind of, at least for Latari, she kind of settled into the fact that he was going to be a consistent problem, considering her tie to David and everything like that. She's like, until this, we find a way to actually kill a demon, like it's just going to be a problem. And it's that <coughs> life, that's life. Exactly. Um. You know, on top of that, there that's you guys have that uh currently on y'all's plates, other than of course the big bad and the actual like main the full on main story of this campaign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he actually has left us alone, which is concerning for a majority <laughs> of this. It, it's been everything else that's been bombarding us. He's been leaving us alone for the most part. He leaves you alone. To be a very, very busy person. Hmm? He leaves you alone. You went and found somebody You're, else. Yeah. If he leaves you guys alone, it either means he's dealing with other side things, or he's not dealing with you guys, so you don't try and deal with him. Which is yeah. honestly fair on his part. He probably figured out real quick that if he leaves us alone, we leave him. <laughs> uh -huh. He did. Which is why he hasn't actually attacked you guys in any capacity. Reminds me, I want to talk to you about something after stream day. Sounds good. <laughs> um, sounds good. Oh, the uh, death cleric. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that's we still okay. I haven't dealt with him, but I'm pretty sure there's at least one person in the party who wants to deal with him. Uh huh. No. <laughs> yeah. He's actually he one of the cut off his one... arms and show up his ass. <laughs> yeah, he's actually one of the things that's gotten Latari so scared and so close to, like, uh, this could be a problem, because it mm -hmm. got up in their faces. That was the one time we didn't have Stalwerk and Nal in the party, and <laughs> we saw real quick how that was gonna go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fun fact. That was barely an ounce of what he could do. Yeah. He held back because he wanted to see what you guys could do. And you guys unloaded a lot on him. Well, you showed a lot of cards. What? <laughs> yeah, but you showed a lot of cards. He barely flipped one. Yeah. But, you know, you go... I'll, I'll, I'll keep the rest of that to myself for now. <laughs> Because yeah, no. I, I have aspects of him I actually need to add to an altar uh, because of the things he's learned. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so before we get to a couple last things, are there any questions you guys have with anything we talk about, anything you've been wondering for the campaign, anything that I can answer? That you can answer? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But... That, that's one of those things, like, we're still in the middle of the campaign, so it's kind of tricky to ask questions of, like, hey, is this going to be a problem? <laughs> okay. Anything from early in the campaign that you guys have dealt with uh, already that you had any questions about? I guess is a better way to mm -hmm. ask that. Not on my end. Not at the moment that I can think okay. of. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not the same way. All right. Well, then that brings us to what's next. Uh, for this campaign. You guys are pretty set on going and seeing if you can help Raven. Mm -hmm. So that's what's next, as far as for this campaign. Mm -hmm. After this campaign, we roll over to my next campaign, which I have started working on things for. <laughs> I'm excited um, to play the, the frantic... Oh, fuck, <laughs> I lost my magic! Yeah... <laughs> Um, which I will be altering what level you guys start at, because one is way too fucking low for the things I could throw at you guys, and three is just a more fitting thing. Yeah. Um, but... I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Well, the more I sat and thought about it, and the more I've been figuring things out, I'm just sitting here like, one is gonna be... They're, they're all gonna die. My poor Very squishy wizard, my, my sorcerer, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but no, it. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that that's what's coming next after this campaign is uh, a continue another campaign, and I wouldn't even say continuation. Uh, yeah, things are gonna roll over, but not in the sense of what you would think. Uh, a brief overview of what Echoes is, is my campaigns are going to deal with timelines. Uh, a good way to look at this is my campaigns are going to be experiments of the butterfly effect. How certain choices could impact others and other situations. Whereas Shadows is dealing with the past of this land and the people around you and yourselves and the darkness that's there, Echoes is going to deal with the echoes of other timelines. Um, you may encounter what could have been with certain encounters or just other worlds entirely that weren't Shadows of Landar. Um, might just be a different world where it's not Landar that you deal with. There's going to be your own singular things as far as in the land you're in. But these echoes of timelines and events and stuff are going to be a, a focus. But not to an extreme extent. And you'll see what I mean when we get into that campaign. Um, otherwise, there's not much more I can say about that. Uh, because I don't know where the majority of it's going to go yet. Uh, and I'd like to leave a little bit of a surprise for you guys with that. Fair. Uh, there is one thing about the end of this campaign that I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I've already made the comment saying you guys are going to be level 20 
by the end of this campaign. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be level 21 when the campaign ends. And when I say 21, uh, the extra one is actually... I'm going to... Just go ahead and say it now. It's more... You guys yourselves are going to gain an extra level. Um, and what I mean by that is... Without you guys, and I said this early in the stream and everything, without you guys, the stories I've told in Landar would not have been possible. Um, so, you know, I could say you've all gained a level of bard for helping me tell the story. <laughs> Cheesy way to put it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, it, this story would have been nothing without you guys. And I don't think there's anybody I would have rather had in this campaign than you guys. Aww. You put up with some of the stupid decisions I've made. Uh, I, I've questioned a lot of the choices I've made, and you guys have gone with them. Um, you know, you've, you've all questioned as far as some of my decisions, and... Trust me, it's well warranted. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, but it, it's good to sometimes question because it, it helps you understand. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why I question a lot of things y'all decided to do as characters. I go with it though because y'all are crazy. <laughs> but in, in in all seriousness, it we're 81 sessions in to this campaign that I've you had told me a couple years ago when I started playing with you guys that I'd be leading you guys through a campaign of my own when I barely knew anything about D&D &D, when I started in Withra with Garthog and eventually we all started like dual wheeling characters and I got to bring in my first ever character to that and do stuff in there you I would have told you I, that you were crazy. That I didn't think I'd be willing to or have the confidence to come in here and do this type of stuff. And do what Fluffy had done. Do what Crumpler had done. You know, and tell these stories. Because uh, those were both my first DMs. Crumpler with Adventures League and Fluffy with Withra. Um, which are why they're two of the biggest influences of what I've done with Shadows. Uh, and we had, like I said earlier, uh, Matt Mercer for Critical Role. Uh, and there's a reason my campaign seems dark, and that's because I like the dark storytelling of Chris Perkins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but even without them, even without the two huge names, this campaign would have been nothing without the influence I got from all of you. Because without your characters, there would have been no story. Without you guys to fill the story, there would have been no story. And to that, I have to say thank you. Hmm. And I'm excited to see where you lunatics take the rest of this campaign. <laughs> yes. Listen. I, I am both sh excited and nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because all I have to say is you thought shit got real with the arc where David and Stolver got, stol they got taken. You thought shit got real with the Thera's Dune stuff, with, you know... All the Barovia stuff. No, no, no. <gasps> Welcome to where the real fun for me begins. Because everything from here on out, this is stuff that I've been working on in the background. Every I've analyzed every decision you've all made. 
every enemy you've every enemy you've made, every ally you've made. Which allies it would hurt the worst to lose. Which enemies you would hate to see the most? Certain questions were asked here tonight to help with that. Oh god. <laughs> But no, uh, in all seriousness, it, I'm excited for the rest of this campaign because I want to see where you guys take it. I could railroad, I could do all that. I don't want to do that. D&D &D is a cooperative storytelling game. You guys are as much an author of this story as I am. And I appreciate all of you. All the oh. hard work you've put into this. Every aspect. Every RP. Every combat. Every lunatic invention you want to build. <laughs> every psychotic decision of enemies you want to attack. Yes. Every <laughs> door you want to blow open with a fireball. Listen. Every time you tell a god to essentially suck it. No. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. I would never do that. Every time Huffle threatens somebody that could probably squish her. I know. But doesn't that thing. care. That little thing. Uh, every time Raven, it, again, every time Raven wants to be a smart ass to the dice gods. That poor girl in. Ha, ah, shield. Ha, ah, you missed. It has two attacks. Nat 20. Shit. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it... Truly blessed as far as have you guys as players. You make it fun. It's been a chaotic good ride, so thanks for, like, taking us on it, I think. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys haven't even gotten to the first loop. Uh... Nah, I'm just kidding. You guys are about three loops into five loops. That's fine. <laughs> you haven't reached the corkscrews yet. Yeah. Uh, unless you guys have anything else, I think this might be a good stopping point for this talk. I think I'm I'm good for now. Yeah, I could uh, go on for hours about this party, but like <laughs> I, I think at the end of the campaign, after everything is said and done, we do another one. And any post campaign question you have as far as about things you could have encountered or things you didn't encounter, you can address them then. Yeah. Maybe. Alrighty. Thank you, those. Thank you to stream. Thank you to those who will be watching back on YouTube. Thank you to my players that have again put up with me as I put up with them. <laughs> um, decided where you take this journey. What's that guard's name again? <laughs> Which one? You mean the one uh, from Panthria that you guys dealt with majority of the time? Or the idiotic human that you also dealt yeah, with there? The idiotic human. No. Idiotic the, human. That... The one from Session 1. Oh, one yeah. One from Session 1. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh... I know exactly what you mean, though. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, we're good night, But I'm not everybody. telling you his name. He might be the big bad. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow for Elendor. <laughs> Wait, see what? See you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>